I'm setting off on a journey to make my most ambitious film project yet. Camera rolling. Around the world, the climate is in crisis. My world is melting. It's a scary thing to think about. This terrifies me. And the people who are paying most are the poorest people in the world. What a gross injustice. Our survival is at stake. How are we going to build a better world? I should use my tools to make some change. So I'm traveling the length of the UK to get to the next climate change conference, COP26, where world leaders will discuss the future of life on Earth. Along the way, I'll share stories of people who are on the front lines of climate change. It's so wild. It's like <laughs> stepping into the Garden of Eden. Activists, inventors, and experts. Every time you plant a seed, you're planting a bit of hope. Those whose voices have often been ignored. We are forgotten people. This is our chance to take action. It's inspiring to hear that it can be a part of the solution. All it takes is for the right people to listen. This is Seat at the Table. Last day. And with any luck, we're going to be sailing into Glasgow to COP26. I can't actually believe it. <laughs> it's been a long journey. So surreal to think we're actually going to be sailing in today. We're taking a shortcut through the Crinan Canal and out into the mighty Clyde River to reach our final destination of Glasgow and COP26. We're out on the open ocean and it is so lovely. And last time we were on a sailboat, we were sailing from the Isles of Scilly to the mainland of the UK. There were dolphins alongside us and the sun was rising. And here we are again on a sailboat and it felt sort of strangely emotional to be here. I've been reflecting all day today on the trip we've been on, and I think the thing that I'm going to take away the most from this trip are the people, the different individuals we've met, and the communities who are coming together to do the most remarkable things in the face of a huge challenge. The next part of our trip is slightly different. It's about COP26 in Glasgow, the conference where world leaders are going to gather together and decide the future of all of our lives. And if they have any of the bravery, ingenuity, and creativity that I've seen from the people we've met on the road, then I think we might just have a shot at tackling this thing. On the journey with me is Professor of Glaciology and experienced sailor, Dr. Alan Hubbard. It's a beautiful voyage to Glasgow, but Alan has his concerns about what lies ahead. On a geological timescale, the Earth will keep on trucking. It's seen worse calamities than this. The real tragedy of it is we are really spoiling our own nest. And we have got this sublime planet, and it's been so good to us. And we are determined to f it up so badly. And I hope that really is the wake-up call to the politicians and all the interests that have some say and control in this. If COP is our best chance to make them see sense, well, what are we waiting for? To Glasgow. <laughs> Over the last few months, I've listened to the incredible stories of people around the world. And having heard their aspirations, their fears, and their optimism, I'm hoping their testimony will move the powerful people at COP the way it's moved me. And maybe there's a better future for all of us at the end of it. It's taken two months, around 2,000 miles, by boat, yeah. train, bicycle, kayak, and tidal power generator. It's been tough, it's been challenging, 
and we're finally here. We've done it. <laughs> I can't believe it. I actually can't believe it. There were so many moments in this trip that I doubted this moment would actually happen. But here we are. Sun's rising over Glasgow and we're sailing in for COP26. And now the important part starts, which is the conference. Across the UK, we've heard one thing over and over, which is now is time to take action. It's time for world leaders to step up. More than anything else, I'm looking forward to screening the stories that we've captured across the UK and around the world. And I'm excited to screen those films to the people who have the power to make the change necessary. It seems at the moment, everyone is talking about climate change. Can and we will deal with climate change. But have world leaders left it too late to avoid a crisis? Scientists have been sounding the alarm on carbon emissions for decades. The atmosphere is indeed warming due to the greenhouse effect. The warming will continue and will be significant and measurable roughly by the end of this century. It's hard for me to imagine a more serious environmental issue. But it took years before their warnings about a greenhouse effect were taken seriously. By 1995, when I was just a toddler, the United Nations realized that this was a global problem that wasn't going away and held the first ever COP event. You, the parties, now stand before the eyes of the world. These conferences were the best hope of making a systemic change, and many countries were full of optimism. In 97, in Kyoto, CO2 targets were agreed for the worst polluters, but not everyone was keen to get on board. We should ensure that the targets will definitely be met for the year 2000. The problem was that cutting emissions hit trade, and nobody wanted to lose money. It does not make economic sense for America. Into the year 2000, millions of people were scared of the millennium bug, but they were missing the real threat, what climate change was doing to our planet. The COP conferences carried on talking about how we could change course, but instead of carbon emissions being reduced, they were growing and growing. Data for this year point to a strong rise in global CO2 emissions. And then social media arrived. People connected in completely new ways. They shared stories and information about what was going on, and they got organized. Anger started to grow about the pace of change. Progress is sometimes like a snail. By 2011, my mum had introduced me and my twin brother, Finn, to the issues of climate change. But like most 18-year-olds, I had more pressing concerns. Hi there. My name's Jack, and this is the first video I've ever posted on YouTube. Then, in 2015 in Paris, it seemed like a breakthrough. World governments made pledges to radically reduce CO2 and stop the disaster in its tracks. Since then, however, countries have done little to stick to those agreements, and every year, emissions continue to rise. In fact, we've had 25 of these conferences so far. That's almost my entire lifetime, and little has been achieved. As I walk into COP, the CO2 levels in our atmosphere are now at 414 parts per million, and yearly emissions are more than double what they were in 1970. By the year 2000, we expect we would be in an unprecedented new climatic regime, different from anything in the recorded history of mankind. <laughs> enough is enough. We know the science, we have the solutions. The time to take action is now. The eyes of the world are on this conference. Over the last two years, it's been unbelievable to witness the increase in activism, whether it's young people, whether it's groups like Extinction Rebellion, putting the public pressure on, and that's what we need. The decisions that they're gonna make here are challenging and they will inconvenience people's lives, but they have to be made. We don't have a choice. We can't skirt around it any longer. And I hope that that's the role people play 
to put on that pressure. Citizens, everyday citizens coming here and saying, we want you to make these decisions and the time is now. It's quiet now, but in 24 hours, this place is going to be heaving with delegates, activists and politicians. The first place I'm heading is the room where all of our hard work is going on display. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. This is so cool. There's Myla, Marika. Aisha, Nassane, Tejas, Koch, Line, Shawnee, and all the chairs. A bit emotional. I mean, it's physical. We're here. We're at COP26, and our heroes are here too. And that just feels so significant. And yeah, I don't know. It feels emotional. I feel, I feel proud, to be honest, like, to be here with these guys. It's so cool. <laughs> it really is. So we about seeing the chairs and each one tells a story as well, like this one from South Africa. Once you fall in love with something, you would want to protect it. This one is far, but I mean. My world is melting. Here from Thailand. I should use my tools to make some change. This chair was in the recent floods in Germany that happened just two months ago, and it has bits of mud and grass on it from the floods. There were definitely ordinary people becoming heroes that night. And the effects of that are physically on this chair. This one from Kenya, made of scrap wood chip. The way people are not taking this thing seriously. I was so affected by the scenes interview, the emotion that he brought to his interview. Sorry. <sighs> Our chair, which has become so familiar, has travelled with us across the UK. It's today with Attenborough. The people who are paying the most... ...are the poorest people in the world. What a gross injustice. The incredible Jane Goodall. Wasn't that long ago that I was sat in front of her and she said... Hope isn't just sitting back. Wishful thinking. Hope for the future depends on... Each one of us doing our bit. Every single person that sat in this chair have done their bit and now it's up to these guys that sit here at this table. I've loved every part of making this series, but the one thing that I'm most excited about is our hero film. And that's one film, and it's the culmination of all of these voices together. And it's their message to world leaders. It's their story. And this is the first time that it's going to be seen anywhere. Last year, more than 30 million people were displaced by climate-related disasters. Rising oceans, dangerous droughts and floods. This isn't about politics. It's a matter of life and death. We've got to deal with this now, and that's why COP26 is going to be such an important moment for the world. Um, my neighborhood is a really friendly place. And I really like it there. It's a place where we feel comfortable and free and, yeah, happy. This utter devastation is the German town of Arkweiler. Our house, me and my wife's house, is a small, really old house. Enormous devastation. People's lives have been ripped apart. With nice windows, a small sitting area in front of the house, uh, normally flowers around the door. This old town has been smashed to pieces. My world is melting. My children are aware that we have a lot of dangers around us. They experienced the avalanche in 2015 uh, and my daughter knew the girl who died. Growing up, 
I had hopes and dreams to start my own family, have children, go snorkeling with my children and explore the underwater beauty. But I'm absolutely terrified to bring a child to this world. There's always this fear that we have crossed this chance of reversing it and it is irreversible and if we've crossed that point what do we do what are we going to do as humanity i think that is something that scares me it breaks my heart to think my kids are not going to experience the same as what, 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 what i've experienced it's changing it is that dramatic my greatest fear for the future is there is more flood, that there is heat, that there is starving. Becoming forced to migrate and becoming climate refugees. We're going to be fighting for some resources. That's what my mom tells me every time. In the next few years, there's going to be wars about, like, who should get the water and fighting about land and, like, resources, basically. After the great flood in Bangkok, I'm afraid that my city will sink. I will lose someone I love, I will lose my home, or even I will lose my life. We know what needs to be done. The science is clear, solutions are there. So it's just, it's just unacceptable that the politicians are delaying it every single day. The way people are not taking this thing seriously, it just frustrates me sometimes. And I just feel like... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. We need to change things as fast as possible not just to talk about what we can do, but to do what we can. Can we fix climate problem in one generation? My answer would be yes, we have to. The first thing I would ask about climate change is to put the politics away and put the climate change as the first priorities whenever you make decision. I hope that uh, you have the courage to do something to, to change this, not just listen to the money, but put the nature and the climate first and that you can talk to each other and find agreements so that the countries can, can help each other instead of working against each other. Every choice counts. What you do today will decide the fate of our future. Because it's not about your country, but it's about the survival of humanity. I hope that this documentary sparks something and that the world leaders can stand up and make a difference. And since they are world leaders, that others can look up to them and see what they're doing so that they can also take a step further and make a difference in the world and fight against climate change.
next time on Seat at the Table. I'm in the heart of COP. Team Wakara! We are here discussing our future! That's your face being projected across <laughs> the entire conference centre. As we try to get our hero film in front of world leaders and provoke them into action. The world is looking to you. This is what this has all been leading up to.